The Adventures of Captain Bobo, Book One, Bananas, written by R. D. Dijkstra and K. Hutchison, narrated by John Sessions, published by Bell Media, Scotland. Finished with engines," said Captain Bobo. "Aye, aye, Captain," replied Sheila, the first mate. She moved across to the shiny brass ship's telegraph. And pulled the levers back and forth to send the captain's orders down to the engine room. Went the telegraph as she positioned the levers on finish. Sometimes it was slow ahead, other times full ahead, and even full astern. Finish meant the engines would not be needed again, and Red Gauntlet was securely docked. Down in the engine room, Chief Engineer Puffy Watt and Boing Boing, his assistant, started pulling levers, opening valves, twiddling knobs, and flicking switches. The engine room was filled with great gushes of steam. Finally, after a gentle thrum, there was silence as giant pistons and shiny cranks finally came to rest. Well, Sheila," sighed the captain. "That's it. To think this fine wee boat has been sailing these waters for twenty-five years, and now it's no longer needed. We'll be lucky to get the odd summer cruise from now on." "Yes, Captain," said Sheila. "Unfortunately, there's no demand for grand old paddle steamers like Red Gauntlet any more." "What do you think, Salty?" said the captain, giving Salty a pat. You think we're finished at sea? Ruff! Barked Salty. Having said their farewells to the crew, the captain, Sheila, and Salty sadly went off duty. They walked along the dockside to get a cup of tea from the little tea room at the dock gates. They were passing some large wooden packing cases stacked at the dockside, full of all sorts of strange things that were waiting to be loaded onto a ship. When they heard a noise coming from somewhere beyond the crates, they puzzled for a moment. What could it be? It was as though someone or something was sucking up soft ice cream through a straw. But it was ten times as loud. Still, the slurping slurped on. It was definitely coming from somewhere, but all they could see was an enormous pile of banana skins. They crept closer as yet more banana skins sailed through the sky, each landing with a flop on top of the pile. Until finally, they saw what was causing the noise just inside the warehouse. It was an elephant, happily guzzling bunches of bananas. Well, now, the captain said, "That's not a sight you see every day. He must be part of the new safari park. The ferry took the animals across earlier. Wonder why he missed it," mused Sheila. Well," suggested Captain Bobo, "elephants have a great sense of smell. I expect when he got out of the lorry and sniffed the air, he couldn't resist the smell of ripe bananas." Just then, they heard a helicopter overhead and a siren launching the lifeboat. "What's up, Mister Singh?" Captain Bobo called out to the harbour master. "Anything we can help with?" No, Captain. Nothing you can help with. An elephant is missing on the new ferry. It must have fallen overboard. Oh, I see," said Captain Bobo. "This elephant—it wouldn't happen to like bananas and be wearing a red leather collar with a tag saying 'Tufty,' would it?" "What? You've seen it?" inquired the harbour master. "Not two minutes ago." Replied the captain, smiling. Over here, he added, pointing to the pile of crates, happily munching on bananas. Mister Singh was relieved that Tufty was safe, 
It's not every day you have to report a lost elephant. Mr. Singh called the safari park manager, who was delighted to hear Tufty was on dry land and not bobbing about at sea. However, he also asked to have Tufty back in time for that night's gala opening. Mr. Singh told him it was impossible to get Tufty there in time for the event, as there was no other ferry that day. Why don't we use Red Gauntlet? offered Captain Bobo. It's got enough space on deck to fit a whole herd of elephants. And all the bananas, Sheila added with a smile. And so off they went to get Tufty on board. It's no use, shouted Sheila. He's just too big to use the gangplank. What about the crane? said the captain. Tufty was not at all happy with the way things were going. How he wished he had just boarded the ferry like everyone else. Suddenly, Billy, the cabin boy, said he had an idea and ran off. When he came back, he had something in his hands. It was Pinky, his pet mouse. Have we carefully positioned the crane above Tufty and then let Pinky loose? It might work, explained Billy, smiling. That's worth a try, said Captain Bobo. Billy laid some bananas on the ground and asked Charlie, the crane driver, to position the hook in the air. Remember, we have to move fast if it's to work, shouted Billy. Right you are, replied Charlie. Ready? As Billy thought, Tufty just couldn't resist and lumbered towards the bananas. As he was about to tuck in, Billy let Pinky go. The mouse scampered over to the bananas. When Tufty saw Pinky, he shrieked a mighty and leapt up in the air with fright. Elephants just don't like mice. Tufty caught hold of the dangling crane hook and held on for dear life. There was no way he'd get back down on the ground with a mouse on the loose. Quick as a flash, Charlie lifted Tufty gently up onto the middle of the upper aft deck of Red Gauntlet. Billy, you're a genius. Great job, everyone, said the captain, heading for the bridge. Fire up the engines. We have a job to do and a gala to save. Cast off forward. Cast off aft, shouted Captain Bobo, turning to Bleep the Bosun, the longest serving of Red Gauntlet's crew. Full ahead, Bleep. We're on a rescue mission to save tonight's gala opening. Aye, aye, Captain, responded Bleep as he rang the telegraph. Came the reply, ten degrees to starboard. Tufty was on his way. Tufty liked being at sea. There was quite a bit of fun to be had. Splash! The gulls just couldn't resist Tufty's water spray and all took their turn to have a power shower in the sky. Red Gauntlet made good time on the crossing. Ten minutes later, Captain Bobo was on the radio. Paddle steamer Red Gauntlet to pier. Paddle steamer Red Gauntlet to pier. Come in, please. Go ahead, Red Gauntlet. We're receiving you. Came the reply. Hi, Zoe. Stand by to receive one lost elephant. Over. A few minutes later, the radio went again. Pier to Red Gauntlet. Can you dock on the marina side of the pier, please? We'll use the big yacht cradle to bring your cargo ashore. Over. Tufty was welcomed back and led off to the safari park to have a proper meal of fresh leaves, branches, cabbages and a big bale of hay. What can I say, Captain? You saved the day, beamed the manager. All of our animals are special, but Tufty is really important as he's at the heart of our conservation programme. 
Please accept these VIP tickets for tonight's gala as a special thank you, he added with a smile. After enjoying the gala opening, everyone was very grateful to Captain Bobo and his team. Dufty had been rescued and reunited with all his animal friends. The safari park manager turned to Captain Bobo. You know, Captain, I think you've proved there's life in the old paddle steamer yet. Somehow, I don't think we've heard the last of Red Gauntlet. <laughs>